is Dortmund making hard for themselves is that they're too eager. Like you know, there's there's no composure. No, but it's fine because the lead up and the build up play is so nice. Eh. Yeah, it's but... just that they need in that moment uh, they lack one Lewandowski. Right? I feel uh, that's my opinion. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Football Kaki. I am your host Elder and I am joined by my fellow Kaki bro Paul. Paul, how are you doing bro? I'm sleepy brother. <laughs> <laughs> what you lose yeah? I watched uh, the Champions League final last night. Uh, and then it was like a very rainy morning right? So I was, yeah, very, had a slow Sunday to, to slow start to my Sunday. But I woke yeah, up to watch like UFC 302. So it was I not think- too bad. Uh, Islam versus Dustin Poirier, sir. I got no idea who is that. I haven't seen that UFC chef. like for a super long time. Yeah, I I I figured out lah. I I think only me that and I watch UFC in our in our like group so far, right? No, I think it's because last time, okay, yeah, like my favorite fighters all retired already. So after a while, yeah, I yeah. just kind of kept like away because my favorite division is like heavyweight last time. But then after all the John Jones scandal, right, I was like, okay, I'm not really gonna watch this. But I think he's still he's still gonna fight though, John Jones. But like soon, maybe this year or something. Yeah, but I mean, after all the the history and everything and there he never lost the title right no he hasn't even lost at all bro the title still with and, him right and because it's been like years yeah yeah I think he's the heavyweight also eh, bro if I'm not wrong oh I cannot remember That's yeah the yeah one. UFC heavyweight champion John Jones Sports yes sir yeah, but, but I mean like other than this right like technically because EPL already finished FA Cup already done so the week's been kind of like it's been a bit boring uh, because everybody's just waiting for Euros man. yeah why well, bro imagine if there wasn't if there wasn't any Euros uh. Wow, oh, bro, it's going to be super boring. Boring until August, right? <laughs> wow, oh, I, I think it's going to be super boring because the transfer window doesn't officially open until like... Super, end June, I think. End June, I think. Like that. But then you got to wait for a period of time, right? Before all the transfer needs all come. So you only got speculation on it. Yeah, which is like, no point. I'd rather not buy it, like just not follow the news now until something is confirmed, right? Correct, it's quite correct. draining uh, to keep following news that is like not true or not relevant, you know? Yep, yep. It's a bit, it's a bit frustrating lah. Like the whole point is like, you want to go look at transfers, right? But then you also got a lot of like things that you are just trying to do to just fill up the air. Yeah, <laughs> or, like a lot so of just also, like, never mind. Yeah, we are looking at this right, and this week, of course, we are talking about the Champions League final because Real Madrid won their fifteenth Champions League. They are six. It's ex- 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 expected, bro. Really. Six in yeah. six in what ah? Uh? Since twenty fourteen, right? The six one since twenty fourteen. Six in ten years, I think. In ten years, really, right? So it's almost every two years, every other than the three, the three in a row, right? It's almost every other year they win the Champions League. One. Yeah, it's like they last year they lost, but the previous year they won. <laughs> All right, correct. So it's a shame because last year had there been a Real Madrid versus Man City final, right? I think Man City did win the treble, but they got knocked out. I say, but Man City did beat Real Madrid in on the way to the final. Right? Correct. That's why. So yeah, I would have left it for like I would have rather it. If they wanted to rig something last year, right? Just rig the the champ- to make it the Real Madrid versus Man City final, ma. Yeah, but it, there's this uh Florentino Perez, uh, You know how this tournament is really made for them. It's when he said, "Okay, we got a 15. Let's now our our focus is on the 16, bro." <laughs> you ever even give yourself time to celebrate the 15 one, and you're already like eyeing the 16 one? Eh? It's because it's what they want. What? Like like we said last week, what? Like I, it's the only club I've ever. In- Remember right that the manager gets sacked for winning a league title, but he didn't win Champions League. Like who gets sacked? For, who yeah. gets sacked for lo- for winning a league title? Eh? Yeah, and then it's like his sole requirement is to win the Champions League. Right? Of course, because it's Real Madrid. Like like what you said last week, uh, Real Madrid and Champions League is together. And there's no separation. Yeah, the need the they have to go hand in hand. Right? Correct, correct. So um, what we're gonna do today in this week's episode is we're gonna talk about the Champions League final itself. Uh, Real Madrid beat Dortmund 2-0. Then, of course, we're going to talk about the two German players that have officially like finished up their legacies. Like, Tony Cruz officially played his last game and Marco Royce is officially leaving Dortmund. Like. So, we're going to talk about the two of them and their legacies uh, towards the end of the episode. But first, bro, let's talk about the final. Real Madrid beat Dortmund 2-0 with goals late in the game from Carvajal and Vinicius Jr. But, bro, if you're talking about in all respects, right, should Dortmund have won? Yes, uh, okay, not one. The one shouldn't have won, but they will have been in a very strong position that they will be taking the lead until at least up to 75 minutes. They should have made it harder for Real Madrid, right? 
towards the end. They made it hard for themselves. Yes. <laughs> Bro, the amount of chances they got in the first half, right? When I watched it, right, I'm like, how is Dortmund not winning this game? Yeah, bro. Like, okay, Julian Brand missed a very easy one in the early early on. After he dribbled, bro, the Eddie Emmy, yeah, Eddie, Eddie Emmy, bro. This one, ah, uh, the Eddie Emmy, right? Like, do you see the meme? It's like Eddie Emmy in the 23 20 Yeah, Darwin Nunes. Yeah. There's the Lukaku, the Lukaku <laughs> one. He block, he block off. No, they put the, the they put the the Dortmund front three, right? Then they put all three is the Darwin Nunes face. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Bro, 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 Eddie Emi uh, is like, if there's one player I can relate to him, right, it's Raheem Sterling. Uh. He is so fast, right? He can round the keeper and everything, uh, but the finish is not there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> agree. Because, okay, let's let's just talk about the chances, right? Brand misses one. And then Yemi has a one-on-one. He round like, Koto le- already. Eh. Yeah. He already beat Koto already, right? He pushed the ball so far wide that the ball ends up going past the byline. When it, actually, if he just had a bit more control, right, he would have tapped in, it would have been one nil already, eh. Yep. Then uh, another one, right? In the 28 minute, they pass a true ball straight to Kotoa. Yep. No, no, sorry. Straight on to Adam Yanyu. Right? Then he's a one-on-one. Eh. He shoots straight at Kotoa. Eh. And then the, there was another one, they hit the, the post, the Fukro. Fu yeah, but Fukro offside. No, the, not the goal. Eh. I don't know. The, fir- the first one... The oh, first yeah, one, yeah. The did, one that bounced off that the... If, let's say he had gone into the goal, it would have been offside because he was half a body ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but bro, Adi Yanyu at least himself could have scored two eh, easily. Should have scored two focus should have at least got one. Yeah. But the problem, the thing I noticed with the one is that it's Dortmund making half on itself is that they're too eager. Like, you know, there's, there's no composure. No, but it's fine because the lead up and the build up play is so nice. Eh. Yeah. It's just that they need, in that moment, uh, they lack one Lewandowski. Right? I feel like that's my opinion. I, I agree, agree. Because they were, it was that eagerness to be able to, like, okay, I need to get something out of this, right? Or I need to do something to get a score, right? Because they tried. It didn't work. Half time came. They go into the second half, right? Second half is majority Real Madrid already. No, I would say up to set. Like, they only came alive like 25 minutes to the end. Yeah. So, the thing is that, the, but still, it was more towards like, okay, let's look at this. Lah. Real Madrid, what it was more, okay, cruise free kick. A cruise free kick. Why? I cannot pronounce it. Cruise free kick. kick. Cruise free kick. Then after that, right, it was the corner to cover half. The 48 minute right, that was a like basically a foreshadowing really. Because yeah. that that corner right was exactly identical to the goal. Same position. I don't know why they cannot defend set piece when they have like so many tall players. Eh? They have what Schlotterbeck and Hummels, right? Correct, but Schlotterbeck was Emery Chan also, yeah. No, Schlotterbeck yeah, yeah, was. It was the Eddie the Emi, I think. Or was it Matt? I can't remember who. It was uh, one that the, let him go, yeah. The goal was hooked. But the thing is that if you were to be really honest, like you push Schlotterbeck and everything, like, you wouldn't push Schlotterbeck on on Kavahal. On Kavahal. Yeah, you, you because he's the, then Kavahal is one of the shortest players. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So like, you would rather put him on like, maybe a Bellingham or other players that are inside the box. Yep. You wouldn't put him on Kavahal because Kavahal is small. Mm. So the fact you that Kavahal beat out the entire defenders, right, and players that are taller than him, uh, for that first header, right, and it went over the bar, it was like, hey, what is this? It's yeah. like, it's like a Porsche. Maybe they, think, maybe they was, thought that he got lucky with that. Uh, you know. Correct. Because the thing is that it wasn't in that incident that it was just it wasn't just the goal that happened eh. it was one before the goal and then another one after the goal almost yeah. the same yeah almost the same almost the same so it was three times really Dortmund, Dortmund gave up the same play that could have cost them ah. so once the goal went in the 74th minute ah, Dortmund if you're Dortmund right you're like wow I control this entire game ah. then now I got to chase really mm. so it's it's like the worst feeling in the world right is you got to chase for, you got to chase a final for 15 minutes against Real Madrid yeah, when you were dominating it. Eh? Yes. Yeah, so when I watched the game, game, I was like, wow, really? When I, I just say, as the game grew, I was like, wow, Real Madrid just need one chance. Then they will yeah. take that one chance and score. And yeah. which they really did, like, yeah. Because honest, honestly, right? Honestly, right? Like, it's almost uh, similar to the Liverpool final, the previous one. Like, remember what we talked no, about? No, but that game, that, that, that Liverpool game, Kotoa was the man of the match. Sure. Yeah, Kotoa was the man of the match. <laughs> game, Liverpool so they didn't really like, waste their chance, you know? It's like Kotoa saved them. Correct. This game is similar to, similar to our domination, right? But just that uh, Dortmund messed up. La. Yeah, Dortmund messed up. Plus, right. Kotoa is a big game player. La. You have to admit. La. Yeah, he made some good Steady, safe and steady. No, no, no problem, no issue at all. Yeah, correct, they, they correct. Don't, don't make stupid mistakes. Yeah. Correct. But, bro, with like, what, 88 minutes left, right? You're chasing the game. Madsen does the dumbest thing in the entire world. Yeah. yeah already leading up to the that point, already, they, Dortmund giving the ball away already. 
give in your own half. Eh. Right. In your own half, no, not even your own half, right? Outside your own box. Yeah, and then when then Bellingham, Bellingham picked it up, right? And then yeah. assist to Vinicius. Yeah, and then that's well, like the final nail in the coffin. Uh. But what was your reaction uh, when he gave the ball away? <laughs> it's like, bro, the moment he gave the ball away, uh, it's like, guaranteed it's goal already. Uh. Because you know, yeah. I, I saw it was like two of them versus uh, Bellingham and Vinicius Jr. versus the right back. Correct. Yeah, and then it's like, boom, game over. He but chipped then the Cobo. Do, do you see Roy's reaction? Yeah. But they didn't even start Roy's law in the in the the final. I know, but bro, you saw Roy's reaction. He just stood there. Because he already know already he's got he already know it's like Bro, yeah, what, okay, what, he, what, he, what he's so far he can't what can you do? Yeah, he can't do anything. Because it's uh, him, it's yeah. a mistake. Eh? Like honestly, uh, honestly, eight minutes left, right? Eight minutes to chase the game, we still got time. And then yeah, but you don't, to do something you don't do this, uh, yeah, you don't do something like that. Uh. You don't do something that stupid right in the in the eighty second minute. And then you give the ball away just like that. And the thing is that you can see at yeah, the moment you give the ball, Madison, like he, he dropped back. Hey, too late, too far already, man. Right. Yeah, like he's like, oh, can't, can't close down already. After yeah. that, I think you can see like the Dortmund, they a bit discouraged already. Then, yeah. they get the ball forward, they focus course, a uh, disallowed goal. But it's very offside. clear offside. Yeah. Clear offside. La. So, in That's the end, when Real Madrid is in game management more already, man. So it's right. fine. They are, they, even if they concede the, the offside goal, it's like, ah, don't worry. No, no panic, you know. Because they've been they've been there so many times already, bro. Yeah, this is like they they just need that one. To be honest, they they could have just won one new. It's fine. Yeah, I will agree. And so in the end, it's two 0 Real Madrid came number fifteen. Bellingham gets his first. Cruz gets his six. Modric gets his six. Nacho gets his six. Carvalho yeah. gets his six. Yeah. Carvalho gets his Nacho, six. Nacho, eh, bro? Nacho, yeah. Sir. Carvalho, gets six. <laughs> Carvalho gets his six. Right. Then you know Carvalho, right? He's the only player to have to have never lost to play in all six, right? So he, played, he played in all six, yeah. Yeah, he played in all six and he won all six. Yeah. What so a record. Played, what an insane Smith, record. Yeah. Vinicius gets his second, Rodrigo gets his second. Bellingham gets his first at 20. Correct. And who else is coming? Yeah, Mbappe, brother. Yeah, can, can you imagine uh, if like if Cristiano was still there? Wow. It would be what? Six and seven, right? Including the Benzema year that one. Yeah, it's quite sick. Uh. No, but. If Ronaldo would be number... No, Ronaldo would have gotten seven. 98 already. Bro, you would have gotten 6, what? Now he has 5, so 6, 7. 7, bro, 7. Do you want Champions League 4, four Real Madrid? Right? 4 or Real Madrid, 1 in Man U. Then if he stayed for well, the, seven, seven. Again, the Liverpool and this one, yeah, so it would be 7. Right? 7. 7. So it's a lot. It's mad. Mm. I, I, I'm re- more or less like, wow. And the best part about this Real Madrid... Remember this quote, they do have to spend a lot of money. Yeah, and they did have a clear striker. <laughs> Next they they won without a striker. Yeah. Next year they got one who's going for free and then they're going, they're going to get a left back for free. Yep. Two free players, right? right. Yep. And the year, they don't even mention the year after that. And don't even mention the year after that plus the Brazilian Andre. So you, they've basically they got, got their future sorted already. Right? Yeah. Bro, then you talk about this, right? Like, I was looking at this, right? Like, Can you imagine this is what the lineup is going to be? It's going to be Kotoa, Kotoa goalkeeper, Kavah right back, Militao, Rudiger, Alfonso Davis, uh, Bellingham, Valverde, Tucho Mani, Tucho Mani, uh, Mbappe, Rodrigo Mbappe. Vinicius, <laughs> Rodrigo Vinicius. Eh. Yeah. Then on the bench you got Adagula, Kamavinga, Modric, <laughs> Mod- Modric, <laughs> Alaba, Alaba. <laughs> 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 yeah, so them sick eh. And honestly, yeah, they just need to buy a right back after that. Right? Yeah, just, to, just to like, like um, cosmetic uh, <laughs> replace Kavahal, right? Yeah. Wow, bro. This lineup is insane, yeah. Like, the future of Real Madrid is not going to be a problem. Really. And not to mention, they have like so many versatile players. Vasquez. Yep. Nacho is versatile. You can play left back, right back. Correct. Even, yeah, left back, right back, center back. Yeah. Sick air. Plus, you got Fulham Mendy also. Right? Fulham Mendy, yes. So I mean, Real Madrid is stacked. Uh, they are. And then if any, if at any point they want to sell somebody, right? That no person uh, is high value. Yeah. Confirm can get money one easily. Like imagine they have to sell like a Valverde or something, right? But they won't sell Valverde also. They won't like, I think he's the next like Galactico. Uh, he's with the, Tuchemani I, and I feel Bellingham. Like, no, I feel like Bellingham. You'll be the trio, right? Yeah. Bellingham, Mo- Bellingham, Valverde, uh, Valverde and Tuchem- and Tuchemani, right, are the three. Are the three replacements for Modric, Modric Cruz, Cruz, Casimiro. Cruz, Casimiro. That's the three. Yeah. Moving forward. Then Kamavinga is the 
like the 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 dead player, right? Correct. Come, come on, fingers the guy there. Okay, I need help. I I need I need somebody to go and play left back. Oh, come on, you go on. Need yeah, somebody no go play CM. You go on. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy, yeah. But I mean, like Real Madrid win. But I think let's talk about something that is also equally as important is the fact that this was Tony Cruz last game. And um, let's just read out like some of the his total total accolades last. So in his career, he's won six Champions Leagues, one World Cup, six Club World Cup, four La Liga, five Super, five UEFA Super Cup. Three Bundesliga. His career stats is uh, 754 career games, 73 goals, 166 assists. For Real Madrid, it's 184 appearances, 28 goals, 98 assists. Is he an underappreciated player? Underappreciated? No, I don't think so. Like, I, I, I do believe that they value him a lot. Yeah. If not, why? If not, if not, there will be no reason for him to stay 10 years at Real Madrid. But I, I wouldn't say that he's underappreciated at Real Madrid. I say underappreciated in football in general. Like outside of Real Madrid. I would say people don't really understand his game that much. They they prefer players who are like flashier, you know. Especially in midfield. Uh. If yeah. you don't have any attributes to entice the crowd, right, then yeah. they will say like, oh, you're just a boring player. So in a way, he's a bit like Sergio Busquets, uh, you know. A bit, but I, like, I they are a bit like underappreciated. But I find that him and Sergio Busquets, the, the, the dynamic ability is different. Yeah, but like, in terms of like, people don't really like notice that much. But I would say But when they are like super pivotal to their respective teams. Right. I would say that Tony Cruz is more like he's more like a post coach Zabi Alonso whereas like Busquets is a, is a DM uh. he's like the DM with like Rodri Kante Rod- SCN that kind right? yeah, yeah correct those type of things like the the ones that do the hard work right but nobody notices one, which is the basically Zabi a favorite point la. but I would say that with Cruz right like I, to me honestly right I think you know me for very long right my three favorite midfielders are post coach Zabi Alonso Tony Cruz right why I like all of them is literally because passing range, they see everything like way ahead, way ahead. Lah. Like everybody knows Tony Cruz can ping a pass straight flat line down the middle, right? Through a whole defensive line, right? For the striker, for the striker to get through very easily. It's a different mm. type of dynamic from let's say a KDB or like a Mezzo Ozil. Yeah. Where like they get into the areas, right? But what he can do is that he can control the, he's the, player that you have on the pitch right to control the game literally control mm. because he's the one that dictates everything so like let's say for example to get it to like your like your your Ozil or to get it to like the other place in front right you need somebody that will be okay I can ping it to the, the right wing I can ping it to the left wing I can ping it to to the front I can cover the defensive midfielder the defensive midfielder just go forward so it's all intelligent play basically it's preoccupying the other guy off the ball that when you have the ball, opponent is trying to read you, but you're already ahead of them because you know exactly what you're going to do. Already. Which mm-hmm. is why I feel like play, midfielders like that, right? They are diamond doesn't. It's the, it's the intelligence level. They don't need to be fast. Yeah. yeah he's not known for his speed. Also, you know? He's not, he's not. But yep. he's known for his passing ability, his free kick, his vision, and his game intelligence. Like. So, like, to me, I will miss Tony Cruz sadly. He, I, I wanted his yeah, like, football boot. When like. Like, you compare him to Modric, they are, bo- they, are, they are both like players of different attributes and different play styles, but they accommodate each other well. So yeah. it's like... And I would say Modric is more comparable to Xavi than Xavi is to Cruz. Because yeah, Xavi is not known for his like, long-range passing. He's more of like close control, tiki-taka. Yep. One, give me, give and go, give and go. You know, there's, Rather than like Cruz is more... Yeah, I sit back and I, I see everything from a Correct. bigger picture. Xavi is more like you pass to me, I give it to you. We go up together. You know, you occupy the free space on the left, on the right. Yeah, with, right. with Iniesta. La. So, yeah, I, I do agree with you on uh, on like different play styles, but not, not a, a play style that not a lot of people really understand and appreciate. La. So that's why I yeah. would feel maybe he tends to lean towards the underappreciated side. Yeah, yeah. I, I, would, I would say so because it's a, it's an old school midfielder. Like legit old school, old hmm. school playmaker, playmaker, Playmaker defensive style style midfielder la. Yeah, like, he's really what you call like a central midfielder, like proper CMCM. That's what people. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason why it worked for so long, uh, like ten years. Yeah. Eh. ten years without imagine ten years no, never not changing your midfield. Yeah. yeah, bro, it's quite insane. Eh. Yeah, and for yes. like to you like maybe the last two three years you you gel with the the younger players and, and like, it still works no in like, like in this modern football. You know, yeah, correct, correct. And there's like literally no difference between like the younger players versus your versus you. Hmm. Yeah, it's like maybe just that your you have to pick up a more senior role, you know, and yep. you string the younger players along. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, like, like just 
to close off this before we move on to Michael Royce, right? I just want to ask, right, like, where does Cruz rank as your midfield, as your in your all-time midfielders list? Bro, the list can go on, I feel. But for <laughs> me, I think in terms of a holding midfielder, right? Definitely yeah. up there with Paul Scholes. Yeah, for sure. Like in the CM, the, the box to box, the CM box. Yeah, so if I, let's say in my formation, I will have like two, one DM, one C, maybe like one four, three, three. So like one DM, yeah. one CM, right? So yeah, I think he'll be top two for sure. Top two, top three. Mm. Along with Paul Scholes. Yeah, yeah I agree. I agree. Uh, I, I love Tony Cruz. Favorite number. He wears my favorite number, number eight. Number eight, so, yeah. Hey, do you see he wore the 11, number. he wore the golden 11 Pro? Yeah, bro. The they made it specially for him. Six, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the boot looks it looked like nice the 2011 Real Madrid jersey, right? Hey, 2013, 2014. The gold collar one, right? 2011, right? 2011, 2011. Yeah, the gold collar one. The gold collar one. He's, he's going to be missed, lah. Like, I, but, but Real Madrid have two very, very good midfielders in terms of Bellingham and Valverde to cover their spots. Uh. So I don't think we should worry. Real Madrid fans, you and don't Modric is worry extending about one more year, I think. Yep. Yeah. Modric, yeah, I heard. Modric one more year. La. But moving on to another fellow German counterpart. I think this one is, uh, is a question, question mark of a lot of things. Uh, Marco Royce um, is officially leaving Borussia Dortmund. His, his total accolades is basically uh, three Bundesliga, two German Cups, two, three German Super Cups. He's lost two Champions League finals. And yep. into both finals, One, right, and both at Wembley. Tony right. Cruz was on the other squad. And both at Wembley. Right. And both at Wembley. So, um, <laughs> in his career, uh, Royce has had 628 career appearances, 239 goals, 139 assists. Dom, uh, for Dortmund, he has 429 appearances, 170 goals, 131 assists, right? Like, um, I think I love Tony Cruz as a player. Hardworking, he's got, he's got skills and everything like that, right? He's a good leader. But I have this question that I always had this like, like thing la, It's like, would he have won more if he wasn't so loyal to Dortmund? Yes, definitely, bro. You you think so also, right? Yeah, I I, I feel that with Dortmund you can only go so far, and yeah. the so far will be probably like okay, a Champions League final, yeah. and maybe what here and there in in maybe ten years you win one or two Bundesliga. Which is true, right? Because it's the statistics shown that he has only won three Bundesliga and like two German Cups. Correct. Go to in Champions League final in twice. Career, yeah. Yeah. And for Royce, right, he is a very, it's a very sad case because I remember in 2014, just before the World Cup, he got injured. And yeah. from then on, uh, that injury never really, like, he never got, he was never the same player after the injury. Uh. After that, year that. after year, is injury after injury. So he decided to like, oh, he's seen like the likes of like what Obama Yang, Lewandowski, or one by Sancho, Haaland, all these one by one leave, right? But yep. he still remained there. La. So I think, I do feel that as a one cup player, like, like Totti, right? Yep. Yeah, I feel that he's very similar to Totti. But then with loyalty comes uh, baggage, la. you don't get to win so much, you know, you, you miss out on opportunities to, to, to improve your accolades. And, yeah, I, I find that with loyalty, yeah. right? It depends on the situation and whether or not you are just, whether you are hang. Because like, we know there's a lot of one club players, right, that have won a lot. Mm. So like, let's say, so like, let's say for example, like, like, Man United got a lot. Geeks, yeah. Geeks, Skulls, Gary Neville. All the one club players that have won a lot, they really won a lot. But then the thing is that Maldini, on the flip side, you've got yeah, yeah. like, Marco Royce. You win on occasion, but you don't yeah. win what many people expected you to win. Which is, which is the set, because like, you like, can only go so far with the current team you have. Ma. You get what right, I mean? Right. Plus the fact that Dortmund is always selling players year after year. So it's hard to keep the, your core of your, your, your team, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I do, I do feel that like in, let's say, let's say 2014, right? If he had gone to Real Madrid instead of Hames, right? I think it would be that kind of player. Because I, I, at that time, I, th- I don't think Hames was a better player than Royce in 2014. No. Every, yeah, nowhere near, think, right? Yeah. Royce was like probably the one that everybody was looking at. Because I remember yeah. when he broke out, I think he had one of a damn good Euro before the World Cup. Or something. The right, yeah. Then suddenly yeah. out of nowhere that injury hit. Yeah, then he he didn't manage to they yeah, and they won the the World Cup without him. Eh. Yeah. So imagine he had gone with them, right? Yeah, dude. He had gone with them. He would have won the World Cup with Germany. And then of course. He right, would have he probably would, have like a lot of suitors that year. 
Correct. And I remember that there were a lot of people after him. So I remember it was like, what? Barcelona after him, Real Madrid after him, Man United after him, Liverpool, PSG. Everybody wanted Marco Royce at a point in his career. But yeah. it's, it's very sad because like... Even Bayern also wanted him. Really. Yeah. And if you look at it, right? Tony Cruz career, right? Is what Marco Royce's career should have been. Because, yeah. because the thing is that, right? Like, let's say for example, right? Like, Tony Cruz left Real Madrid, left Bayern Munich, right? Because he wasn't going to get the spot that he wanted. So he forced his, he forced his way out to get into a position where he could win. Then he made a name for yeah. himself at Real Madrid. Yeah, I, and but, I remember he left... But Macroy stayed loyal. Bayern, yeah, actually, I remember he, Cruz left Mad- Bay- Bayern for like, Bayern. what, 25 million? Yeah. That 25 million you stretched for 10 years. <laughs> and the, 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 like the, the best, best part, right, is that he won the Champions League the year after he left. Yeah. So I think it's really... Uh, yeah, sometimes you have to think for yourself, like, you know. Yeah. Royce or this, yeah. So I, I, I do... I, I, there's no doubt, like, I think there's, at some point in his career, he, he has thought about leaving, like, you know. But loyalty. But maybe it's... Yeah, loyalty and like his impression to the fans or this outweigh everything else, like. Yep. And it's a shame because like you always want a player that's loyal to the club. But the thing is that sometimes in your heart, you also wish that you wanted more for him. Yeah. So I think that in this scenario, it's like a Harry Kane, la, right? Yeah. After like years after con- after years after being loyal to Spurs, he's like, okay, maybe I should just leave. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't win, yeah. Yeah, he didn't win, yeah. He and now he win. got company as his manager. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Like, I mean, it's it's a sad thing, right? So with these two legends, um, their careers are dwindling down there. Obviously, it's coming to an end already, lah. Um, I hope that Tony Cruz ends up winning winning a Euro because I'm I'm a German supporter <laughs> for the for the Euros, right? Which honestly, I the, my but, right now, yeah. But the German team will be hard to win. I I, the, I would say lah. <laughs> oh, this, this German team is difficult, but I yeah. I will say lah, like there is a shout and everything lah. So um, bro, um, we conclude that both of them had stellar careers, right? But Tony Cruz is what fulfilled what his career should have been, maybe even more. Hmm. Marco Royce is what Tony is what is left of a career that maybe should have been should have been unfulfilled or never reached the maximum. I feel like Tony Cruz and he has this very similar like exit as like Philip Lam. Yep. They leave their careers at, at at the peak. I think Lam left immediately after they won the, he won the World Cup, right? Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Which is a bit wasted. I I, I felt that he retired too 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 early. Because I think they won he won the Champions League the year before that World Cup finished after he's done already. Done, yeah. Done. Then Done he lifted the, the trophy as the as captain. So, yeah, dude, it was it's sad because Tony Cruz won the World Cup, Royce didn't, and they were on the same team. Yeah. Bro, anything else said for this? Yeah, I think I think Roy, Royce is not retiring though, but Royce is he's like, not, he's, he's just he's finishing his adoption. Yeah, it's just like, but I, I think that he's many on the rumors of his career already. Like. I mean, you're just probably going to go MLS now. Yeah. All right. I think because why not, I right? Think, Just do marketing stuff for your career. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> because honestly, I think his European football career is finished already. Really. Mm. done already. All right. So that is it for this week's episode of The Football Coffee. All right, so that is it for this week's episode of The Football Kaki brought to you by the Chit Chatter Podcast Network. Now, for those of you who are tuning in, we just want to say thank you and we hope that you continue to support The Football Kaki and, of course, our other shows on the Chit Chatter Podcast Network, which, of course, are the Copy Bros. Every Monday involving everybody from the Chit Chatter Podcast gang. Uh, we do, do do rotations where we talk about different topics and some of them are entertaining, some of them are trivial, some of them are unique and help provide different perspectives from each of the bros uh, from the Chitty Gather Podcast gang. Uh. Then, of course, if you do like game shows, we do have our flagship game show every Friday, the SG Draft Podcast, where we draft about different topics and have fun while we do it. Now, uh, for those of you who are tuning in and who have subscribed to our channel, we just want to say thank you. And for those of you who are watching and have not subscribed to the Chitty Gather Podcast, we just want to say, please press the button below, subscribe to our channel, so that we can continue to produce more content for you. So from everybody here at the Podcast Network and from the Football Kaki and from the Kopi Bros, and from the SG Draft. Uh, we just want to wish you a great week ahead, and let's look forward to the Euro 2024. You all have your predictions. Reply them in the comments below. I think all of us have our certain predictions that we want to face out, like, and we really them. So, have a great week ahead. Bye-bye.